Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Nerds Domain Podcast. You'll hear me say that again in just a few seconds, but first I wanted to apologize for a couple of things. First, the levels on this interview are a little lower than we would have liked, and second, you're going to hear a bit of a buzz here and there that I couldn't get to scrub out of the file. What happened is that we were recording live with our mobile equipment. There was some power fluctuation that caused the buzz, and in the process of taking the buzz out, I had to lower the levels down so it wasn't as bad. Max was a great, great guest, and we were so lucky to have him. So please, take a listen and enjoy our interview with Max Grodinchik. You better bug your brain, you're in the nerd's domain. Come on in, it's about to begin. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Nerds Domain Podcast. Uh, this week, we have a special guest, Max Grodenchik from uh, Deep Space Nine, as well as uh, uh, Apollo, 8, uh, Apollo 13. I did do Apollo 13. That's, yeah. Yeah. And I got your last name right, right? Uh, close enough. Okay. We said Grodenchik. Grodenchik. It's got okay. a little Russian flavor to it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, and so we're here at Starbase Indy. Um, is this your first year at Starbase Indy? I was here in 2005. All right. And have you had a good weekend? Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I had a very good weekend. Excellent. A tiring weekend. Oh, I bet. I bet. Makes you tired. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, good dinner last night with dinner at Stars. Or with uh, Stars. Uh, excellent dinner. Oh, well, good. Uh, usually, uh, dinner is not always so. Um, food's, you know, not always so exceptional. But last night it was great. Great food. Oh, good. Did good. you think that was good food last night? Yeah. Excellent. Well, um, so we all love you in Deep Space Nine, but let's talk. That's been 20 years now. 1999. Yeah, so. Uh, so 15, 15 years. Yeah. So, but what have, you, what have you been doing lately? Um, I, I hear that you have <laughs> a, a little comedy routine where you do a little parody, um, a little parody stuff. I sang last night. That's well, I, I work with a group called the Ra- uh, uh, for Creation Entertainment. Can mm-hmm. I say their name? Absolutely, yeah. I work for a group called Creation Entertainment. They're uh, convention promoters and. Uh, they uh, they do a lot of conventions around the country. They do it for for uh, a bunch of different sci-fi shows. Okay. Uh, and other shows. Um, um, and and they they have the, the the biggest Star Trek convention in the states for the whole year is in Las Vegas. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Las Vegas, Nevada. The usually the first week of uh, August, approximately first weekend in August. Uh, so what we do for them um, with a group of four other guys, and we do a show. They call the Rat Pack Show. Okay. It's just us uh, doing, well, some we do mostly Star Trek parodies of, uh, 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 we make fun of uh, our show DS9 and other things. Okay. And so you and do that, a And that bit. has been so successful. They now, they now, well, they've contra- officially contracted us for the next two years. Oh, excellent. And they want us to be there every year. Okay. The deal is we're, they, they, we close the show. We, oh, are okay. the, we are the last thing you will see. Uh, in the show, and uh, we're not on stage till 9:30 on Sunday night, and I am always amazed that people are there, still there. Yeah, absolutely. So, so we have quite a nice crowd come out, and anybody who's there, it, you don't need an extra ticket for us. It's if you have a ticket, any ticket to the convention, you'll get in to see us. And so this is all at the Star Trek uh, convention in Las Vegas. At the the hotel, at the hotel Rio. Rio yeah. And and do you enjoy going to those kinds of like this kind of convention, that kind of stuff? Do you like meeting all your fans? And yeah, I love it. I love it. I, I like Las Vegas for many reasons. I, I, I like Las Vegas. And also when I fly into Las Vegas, I'm usually here for a much longer period of time. Okay. I, I don't live in the States anymore. I live overseas. So it's tough, tough to come in for just a weekend. Absolutely. But yeah. when I come into Las Vegas, I'm, I'm usually there a week early and leave a week later. It's a nicer stay because we have friends there. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Get in a lot of good gambling, right? <laughs> no, I don't gamble. Oh, well. I don't, I, not, See a show. Yeah, I'm not your <laughs> typical Ferengi, right? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so you 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 you're here this weekend. Um, you're from Austria. You're living in Austria now, right? Uh, I live in Austria. My wife is Austrian, so oh. we, we we had a baby. My wife had a baby, and well, we, congratulations. We, thank you. We, she just turned two. Oh wow! And, and we moved there, and uh, I was just in Vienna recently with the baby, and the woman stopped us and said, "Oh, you must be the grandpa." Oh so, wow! Uh, well, uh, you know. It's okay. Yeah. You, you're wizened. That's what it is, right? It's what? Wizened. <laughs> okay. Yeah, not old. Wizened. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, Star Trek has been part of your life for 50, 20 years now. 
You... Since January of 1990. Oh, wow. From so... Next Generation. Oh, that's right. That's right. Um... Yeah, I did an episode. I did two episodes of Next Generation. The first one, January 1990, uh, called, I know this one, um, uh, <laughs> Captain's Holiday. Okay. So you, 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 you're part of the family. You love the family. You enjoy, you enjoy doing all those things. Has this been a, a positive experience? Would you, would you recommend Star Trek for other people? No, I hated it. It's been <laughs> awesome. <laughs> It's been incredible. It's been an incredible ride. Yeah, it's uh, it's a dream come true. It's, not, yeah. Yeah. it's um, I met a lot, a lot, a lot of nice people, and um, I really like Star Trek actors. I think I think almost you know I, I can't think of one that I don't like, and the, the 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 rest are I just look up to. They're kind of heroic to me. Excellent. Yeah, to us too. It's it's uh, it's amazing to get to sit down with you. Uh, I felt uh, I love. Bomb. I felt that you had a lot of pivotal points in, in DS9 that was just one step in the right direction for your character. Uh, becoming Grand Nagus was great. All the writers. Um, uh, the writers. Yeah. The writers, the writers, the writers. It's the writing, the writing, the writing. I have a, a, a high school friend in Los Angeles, and uh, I don't know how we started talking about this. But he said, we don't need actors. He's a, he's a network executive. He said, we don't need actors. We have enough good actors. We have enough good directors. We don't have enough good writers. Oh, okay. So um, if anybody wants to break into show business, that may be the way the to go. The writers is the way to go. But uh, we had excellent writers. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, brilliant yeah. writers. And writers who cared. I, I can't say enough. You know, when you're, you know, I was a recurring character. And, you know, I have a question with the script. I don't know, should I ask this? Should I not ask this? Judy would say, I'm going to call the writers for you so we can get an answer to the question. And the writers took such care and time with me to explain what was going on, why they wanted the line to be said, and why it was there in the script. Uh, uh, I, I can't say enough about how they were concerned, you know, yeah. for th that things got done the, the way they wanted them to. Yeah. I, I've worked with other writers, and I, I, can't, I can't mention any names, but... Um, I can't, but I don't want to mention any names. But, uh, <laughs> but different experience. Different sure. experience. Yeah, a totally different experience. These guys really cared. Well, that's good. I think that's why the show was so yeah. great. Yeah, I, I, Deep Space Nine is my favorite of, the, of all the series. Oh, thank you. By far. Uh, yeah, because of uh, because of Rom, right? Uh, he's a big part of it. it honestly, <laughs> it's that interconnected story. It never. It, it always seemed like from week to week, that they you were on the same station. It was all the same family. It was all the same group. Um, you know, Next Generation had it had its ups and downs, but it always felt like. This episode was its own little thing, and the next episode was its own little thing. Deep Space Nine had nice arcs. The uh, studio likes the set, doesn't like the arcs. What did yeah. you call it with uh, with um, next? They're, they're very episodic. Just one one little isolated, contained. isolated. Yeah, yeah absolutely. The the, uh, the studio likes the isolated episodes because when they show them, this is what I was um, given to understand. When they show them every day, when they, they sell the series to mm -hmm. a, a syndication, into syndication, and they play it Monday through Friday, they like the um, isolated episodes because you could watch on Monday, mm -hmm. miss Tuesday, and then you don't have to know anything for Wednesday. Absolutely. So I think it's they 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 get more. That's better for them. Yeah. I think what I think what happened with Deep Space Nine, I know they got flack for story arcs, but a wonderful thing happened. Uh, um, they launched a new network in the, uh, I guess after two seasons of DS9. Mm -hmm. They la launched, uh, Paramount launched the UPN, United Paramount Network, and they wanted a Star Trek series to uh, be the flagship show of that, of that new network. And that's how Voyager was created. What happened, so when Voyager came on in our, I think our third season, all the attention, all the focus of all the, mo uh, the monkey mucks at Paramount went to that show. Yeah. And they left DS9. I don't want to say they left it totally alone. But <laughs> yeah, but they, 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 they more freedom. They, there was less attention uh, uh, focused on DS9. So I think when Ira wanted to do a story arc, he had a little more leeway. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just such a, it's such an interesting uh, look at, at these at these long arcs and these characters yeah. that develop over time. Rom started off as kind of a just a sidekick, and I think as as I saw you. Rom grew into this very integral part. You you became important to the to the space station and to the resistance when there was one, and then so on and so forth. And that made me feel more uh, drawn to those characters. Where I love Picard and Riker and all that, but Rom and uh, Jake Sisko and all all even the the, the the reoccurring characters became more real to me. 
because they had an arc. It wasn't just this episode. It was isolated by itself. So, I, I um, Neil, uh, I, you're a busy man. I don't want to hold you on out too long. So, um, we'll wrap up. What, what, were, you, what, were, you, what oh, were you saying was um, interesting? So, I, I, I feel more drawn to those characters. I feel like uh, there was some very deep um, character points in those stories um, that that made me feel like they were more important to me than than Star Trek The Next Generation or Voyager or anything else. And I really I fell in love with, with the, the series. And I'm, I, I'm very blessed to have you here sitting with me. I think that's great. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I think that you were, you were great there. Um, you, you look a lot different without the makeup. Thank you. Um, uh, we saw you walk in back and forth and Shirley pointed you out. And I went, ah, I guess. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, I, I wanted to say uh, 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 to what you last said. Um, they did a great job of populating the station Absolutely. with interesting, very interesting uh, uh, characters. Absolutely. And, and some really, I'm not talking about myself, but I, some really, really uh, incredible actors. Um, Andy Robinson comes to mind, and, and uh, Mark Alimo, Jeff Combs. Oh, yeah. These guys are just, you know, and, and, and they're, they're recurring characters like me, you know? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> they're, they're, they're just so uh, talented and... Um, I, uh, Andy Robinson, when I was in college, Andy Robinson was doing a play that we were doing <laughs> at the university I was at. So I had heard of him. I had heard of him. He was kind of famous in my, oh, yeah. my little college clique. Oh, there. yeah. Um, this is years ago, before his, um, you know, before his experience with, uh, with Clint Eastwood, whatever, the Dirty Harry movie that made him famous. But, uh, anyway, uh, it w it's just an honor to be, to have been one of those guys. Oh, yeah. One of those recurring characters. Yeah. I don't know how many recurring characters. It was like there, there were tons. Like over forty, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jeffrey Combs, I love Jeffrey Combs. He's so many different roles. I yeah. mean, yeah. Um, but yeah, those. So Deep Space Nine, to me, is very personal, and I, I love it for that. Um, but I thank you very much for coming on and talking to us. I appreciate it a great deal. Oh, you're welcome. Uh, is it? Did I answer all your questions? Yeah, absolutely. I, I and I know we had a short time. I don't want to hold you too long. I, you, you've got a lot of stuff. I'm okay. On. We're done. Now is now is when I do. Have, <laughs> I haven't had time all weekend. Oh, but now. Wow. Well, I mean, I, if that's, I, I don't want to. I really don't want to. I haven't long. had it's time. Up, all, it's up to you. Well, I got guys. another couple of minutes. If you have anything else you want to ask. I well, then know. let's but, uh, let's get. Maybe a I should quit while I'm ahead. So. Um, well, first, we'll start with what do you have a favorite episode? Do you have a favorite moment? Something that sticks sure. with you even now? Yeah, my favorite moment is uh, in, in DS9 is when, uh, in the episode Facets, which is a Dax episode. I think it's next to the last episode of the season. Um, there's a B story. It's a, it's a, uh, there's a B story about uh, when Nog is beginning to show interest in uh, join, uh, going to Starfleet Academy, and he takes a test. He finds out he could take a test to help him uh, move along. In, in getting the Starfleet Academy, and um, uh, uh, Rom finds out that Quark has sabotaged the test. Ah! And he waits. He he waits. Rom is waiting in in the hall. What do they call the long halls? The uh, corridors? Or yeah. There's a name for them. I can't. My head's my head's mush. But he's waiting for him uh, to come down the corridor, and he grabs him. He grabs Quark by the lapels, and he says, "If you ever do anything to hurt my son again, I would burn the bar to the ground." And uh, I like doing that for two reasons. Uh, he was standing up for his son, and I got to hold on. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's true that we did it in one take. And I was sh I thought, can't we do this again? <laughs> I got a director say we got to move on. So, so um, yeah, that was a pivotal moment. All right, standing, beginning, Excellent. beginning yeah. to stand up for. Uh, my son. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And then he goes on to stand up for himself. Absolutely, yeah. In the uh, um, the un union episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, bar association. Anyway, that's a little more. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, do you have anything coming up? Anything besides just Star Trek that um, you're kind of focused on? Um, anything movie wise, TV shows? Anything well, I live in I live in Austria, and uh, there are people in Austria who know me in the TV film industry. <laughs> And there are offers, people have offered me stuff, but they say, that, you know, we, we want you to play this role when we get the money to make the thing. Ah, uh, I see. So I'm still waiting. For okay, that, uh, yeah. I've been waiting for one of them for five years to get the money. Uh, uh, yeah. In fact, that guy has, <laughs> that guy has done another project that required much less money. He got tired of waiting, so he found another project he could do for much less money. And he's, I think he did that with Bob Picardo, actually. Oh, okay. His name is Johannes Klenzfurth. 
Yeah, monochrome. Go to monochrome.at and uh, you'll find probably find a little bit of that film. I think with Bob Picardo. Okay, so yeah, anyway. definitely check that anyway, out. Anyway. Yeah. Well, um, so I'm waiting. I'm in Austria waiting. Okay. Yeah. And and raising uh, a wonderful child. Raising a baby. Yeah. Raising a little girl. Yeah. And that'll do us tonight for Nerds Domain Podcast. You can head over to patreon.com slash nerdsdomain and check us out there. If you like what we do, you can always support us. And you can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. You can head over to uh, iTunes and give us a five-star rating. And you always can find our shirts over at Slash Loot. And we will talk to you guys real soon. This has been a production of the Omega Nerds Network. The network where it's on.